So, uh, I want to thank the Lord. Thank you so much, woman of God. Thank you for the opportunity. I don't take it lightly. And in all fairness, um, how many pastors out there who will share the pulpit with their husband or with their wives? So we really, really appreciate. Amen. And um, today, I'm going to talk about, we are not going to preach today, okay? So we are not preaching today, but we are going to have a class. How about that? Yes. Right? Thank you, Bridget. <laughs> She's looking forward to the class. So we are going to have a class, but I'm going to try and go through it. We've got some slides that we are going to go through. Let me say that this topic we are going to talk about today, it's something that is just so outside. It's just so outside the box. It's just, in fact, when the Holy Spirit put it on my heart, right? Okay. I feel like some people at the moment you say the Holy Spirit, they don't feel very comfortable. Let me talk, let me find someone more mature. Man of God. <laughs> How about that? When the, when the Holy Spirit put it on my heart, right? He said, talk about non-verbal communication. I was like, what? Non-verbal communication? Who spends 30 minutes of their life talking about non-verbal communication? And not in church anyways. Uh, but you know what? When the Holy Spirit has spoken, he has spoken. Amen. Amen. Have, I got, have I got your attention? Yes. Yeah. Right? When he has spoken, Jesus Christ said, uh, he said, uh, my sheep, he said, I know my sheep, Amen. and they know my voice. Amen. So I knew that the Holy Spirit has, has spoken. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we are going to go into non-verbal communication. Now, let's go to the first slide. The last time I had the slide, someone was just going through the slide so quickly, I mean, it just was not, it didn't come out right. So I'm going to be asking you to go to the next slide. Okay, hallelujah. Amen. Non-verbal communication. Did you know, I have a question to ask you. Did you know that 90% uh, of our communication is actually non-verbal communication? Did you know that actually your non-verbal communication is actually the most important? Oh no, I shouldn't have said that. I've answered it for you. I should not have said that for you. But you are going to see it when it comes up on the slide. Non-verbal communication. Is it important? Well, I bet your own boots that by the time we are done, you will have answered your own question. Amen? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Non-verbal communication. Is it important? Does anyone want to tell me? Is it important? Yes. 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 Uh, Bridget said, Amen. Yeah. Hey, I want to, I'm going to go for it. So now, why is it important, Bridget? Because it communicates uh, the other, it communicates physically. It, uh, One, two. It communicates um, uh, other things like your emotions and yeah. your feelings that words cannot express. Oh, she's gone straight into my definition. Well, we would not, thank you, I appreciate that. Now, we would not do ourselves justice if we talked about nonverbal communication without some kind of a definition. So let's go to the second slide quickly. Please, thank you. What has this got to do with being a Christian and, and with the Bible? But you will soon find out. You are going to be surprised. Because when the Holy Spirit gives you something, he, he, he gives you something for a reason. Even if it seems like it's something completely unusual. Okay, so according to the APA Dictionary of Psychology, okay, the American Psychological Association, it says, it is the act of conveying information or message without using words. For example, expressions. Do you know that when you go for an interview, they look for your 
expression. They look how you express yourself. You know sometimes you can have all the qualifications and everything. And then when you leave the room, they will look at each other and say, mm, I did not get the, the right. They did not express. She did not express herself properly. I think for this kind of job, this person is not, is not going to be the right fit. You know that. So, now think of communication. Do you think it's important? Yes. Yes. In your daily life, it would be. Guess chance. Okay? I'm not going to go into detail about each one, but I'm just going to go do touch and go. Uh, guess chance. Attitude. Have you ever met someone who gives attitude? Right? Have you met someone who brings attitude even into the workplace? Do you know, guys, that there is someone who actually quit a job within a few days because they felt like the people who were in that place had the wrong attitude. They'll go and say, well, I did not like the attitude. It has nothing to do with the bosses or anything, but just their colleagues, their work colleagues, the way they just came across, you know. And some people uh, had to end up quitting a job because uh, people did not like them because they brought an attitude. And you know, I've seen that happen in church. People bring an attitude and uh, by the time you are standing up here, they are already like, I'll show you the danger of that. Okay? I'll show you the later on we'll see the danger. Uh, what's happening to the slide? Let's do the slide. Okay. So uh gestures. Uh your dressing as well is a non verbal. Did you know that your dressing, the way you dress? It's actually a non-verbal communication. There are some people who say, well, you know, does it really matter how I get dressed? If it didn't matter, why would companies have a dress code? And do you know, man of God, what surprises me is that people think that in church we don't have a dress code, right? I know that uh, uh, my wife, many times, she's uh, back and forth with Michelle, you cannot wear that to church. No, that's not the one to dress, to, to, to wear to church. No. Myself as a dad, I'll be, well, that's all right, that's fine. <laughs> but uh, the mother would be like, no, no, she cannot wear that. And as parents, we should all be mindful of uh, what are we communicating with the way we dress. Facial expressions, your facial expression can actually, do you know actually that there are some people who were supposed to get married, but didn't get married? Sir, do you know that there are some people who were supposed to get married, but didn't get married because there's somebody who did not read the non-verbal language? And they thought that the person was not the right fit. They said, mm, you know, I did not get the, the, the vibe. I did not get the connection that this person was, was the person for me. Because there are some people who are just not good at um, expressing non-verbal, right? There are some people, and there are some people who made the wrong person because they just believed what they were being told, even though they could see that, you know what, uh, the way this person is acting or, or, or behaving or otherwise, I'm not sure this is the person I should marry. But they said, well, you know what, because he said it with his own mouth, you know, I'll just believe him, then you will see what happens. And you know what, after they were together, they realized, mm, you know what, I was actually right. I think I may have made the wrong choice here. Okay, your dress code, I've said, your tone of voice. Okay, elder, all right, elder, all right, elder, okay. All right, okay, I get it. So, your tone of voice can actually communicate that, oh, this person just feels like, you know, they are not, they are not with me. Amen? Although they have not actually 
said any words, but just by using that one word with a different tone, it can actually send a message. And sometimes uh, it requires a knowledge of the culture for you to understand a person's body language and what they are saying. For example, in Japan, okay, when you are going to do business in Japan, they do, you are going to see on the slide, they do a lot of this, Japanese. Uh, it's a body language for respect. They, the Japanese, they are, uh, they are modern, they are advanced, but they are certainly not Westernized. Amen. I may have spoke already a slide that we are going to see. Okay, let's go. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. That's not the, that's the wrong slide. No, that's the wrong slide. I said a, a slide to Nyash that said verbal communication two. It says verbal communication two. It got all the scriptures and things. So this was the wrong one. Okay. So what verbal? Okay. While while they are looking, uh, the the first slide we saw a wrestler. We saw a wrestler. Did someone see that? Okay. Hallelujah. You saw the wrestler. What did you see? What did you notice about that wrestler? Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, what? Two bells. Yeah, two bells. Did you see two bells, Pastor? Yeah. Okay. Pastor saw bells. Okay, what else did you see about that wrestler? He was giant. He was big. Okay. So here's the thing. The belt, it meant, what, it, what do you think the belt means? I'm the champion. Okay. I'm the world heavyweight champion. Have you seen the wrestlers when they come? Actually, in, uh, in the wrestling world, they don't actually call them wrestlers. They call them athletes. And we were going to open a scripture that talks about uh, athletes. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9, verse 25. Okay. And if you see the posture that he has with his wrestling world heavyweight, uh, 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 world wrestling champion belt, he is trying to say, don't you dare. I am the one. Don't, don't even fight me. I, he, he already has a posture that I am a winner. Okay. That I'm, I've already won this before you fight me. Let's go to 1 Corinthians while they are looking. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 25. There's someone who can find it quickly. 1 Corinthians 9 25. It talks about athletes. Did you know that the Bible talks about athletes? All athletes are disciplined. All in their training. Did you see how strong the guy was? Did you see the, the, the muscles here? It takes discipline. You know, I was telling my son another time when I was driving him somewhere, and I said to him, Nash, discipline, there is a thing called discipline. Discipline does not mean that you enjoy what you are doing, whether it's studying, whether it's praying, whether it's, uh, um, whether it's a sport. Uh, discipline means you are doing that for a reason. Amen. You are doing that thing because you know the benefit that you are going to get from what you are doing. Amen. It's not because you like it and it's not because you enjoy it and it's not because it's nice. But when you look at those athletes like wrestlers, in the end you hear them saying, I'm doing this because I enjoy it. But I'll tell you what, when they started, they did it. They saw what they could be. But the training was just so hard. But once they were come down and once they they felt like you know they were getting somewhere that they were get achieving the results they were supposed to achieve, they um, began to uh, they began to enjoy it. It became a part of them. Hallelujah. They do it to win a prize. 
which will fade out. So when athletes have the discipline to train, to run, uh, whether it's boxing or whether it's kickboxing or whatever it is, they do it for a price. They, they do it for a price that is actually corruptible. Right, right. <laughs> they do it for a price. Everything we see on the earth, it came from the dust. All the cars you see, all the aeroplanes, all the amazing buildings you see, you know, everything that we get, that's why the Bible says that for what is seen is temporary, but what is not seen is eternal. So all the things that, um, all the things that we see are temporary, and as um, shown in the, in the bell, okay, 1 Corinthians 9, verse 12. Any wrestling fans in here? <laughs> oh, I'm a wrestling fan. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Okay, let's go to the next one. I think. Thank you, I'm glad you found it. Let's go to the next one. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, hallelujah. So athletes, they have discipline. What, what, what's going on with the laptop? It's not, it's not responding. Uh -huh. They do it for a price that will fade away. It, it, it doesn't just fade away, it can be taken away from him. If somebody else is going to win the next contest, then that guy will, be, will have to return the belt. Even with, with the Olympics, uh, um, uh, sports personnel, they have that cup, or whether they are golfers, and then sometimes some of those they have to return them. What is the non-verbal language that these men are displaying? Honor. 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 They kind of respecting each other. Amen. Okay. Very very important. What does the Psalm say? Ninety-five, uh, verse six. Anyone who wants to read? It? Amen. Come, let us bow and worship. Hallelujah. What is bowing? In the spiritual sense, it's a sign of surrender. Uh, it is an act of uh, adoration. <coughs> hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. No, sorry, I got myself in bed. Um, so, you know the dress the way they were dressed, did you see they were wearing suits? Okay, that's a non-verbal for we are here to do business. We are here uh, to do serious things, okay? So that's why it's the same when we come to church, we come wearing suits because we are serious with this God. We are serious with what we are doing. So do you think non-verbal, are you beginning to get the gist of this? Yes. Do you think non-verbal communication? Perhaps it's something very, very important, but underrated or not even considered by many people. Um, it shows respect in the uh, Japanese culture. Okay, let's uh, go to the next slide. Non-verbal communication. <laughs> Can you see? Why do this? Uh, why do we use this non-verbal language? in worship. Now we are getting we are getting more spiritual now, right? Yes. Okay? It's beginning to look more like it. Why do we use non-verbal language in worship? What are we actually saying? Yeah, uh -huh, you are right. That's the one that I read. Yes. It is a sign of surrender. What else? It's an act of adoration. Amen. Now the Bible says in uh, Psalms in uh, 1 Kings 8 verse 22 and 38, it actually says that King Solomon, when, when he was praying, that he spread out his arms to the heavens. So it's a sign of uh, absolute surrender to God. Let's go to the next slide. Non- Verbal communication. What is that man showing? 
by kneeling in prayer. What is he expressing? And to whom is he expressing it? Hello? Anybody? Or shall we say, why do we kneel when we pray? To humble ourselves, yes? Okay. So, uh, you know, there's something very powerful though. I really like that when I saw it. There's something powerful about seeing a man kneeling down before God. Because men are usually very, you know, <laughs> they are too proud. Do you know that there are some Christians who have never knelt, they've never prayed kneeling down. Amen. They've never prayed. And there are some people online as well who think, oh, you know, you don't have, it's not necessary to kneel down, you know, just pray, you know, as long as you pray, God can hear you, you know. But when you pray, and you are kneeling down, because these things, we believe that God can hear us, we, and we believe that God can see us. So when we kneel down to pray, we are actually showing Him that um, uh, we humble ourselves before you. We are non-verbal expression that is expressed in baptism. What, what is it that is being expressed in that act of baptism? Does anyone want to try? Karen, you were baptized recently. What was explained to you? Oh, okay. I'll, I'll let you off, Karen. Okay, <laughs> let's see if they are. Okay, Elhana. Tell her. Repentance. Repentance? Okay. All right. I'll, I'll give you some, some points there. Uh, I'll give you a, little, a few points there. I'll tell you why I'll give you a few points. Okay, I won't give you. No, no, okay. But because when we are being baptized, we are saying we are dying to self, to the old person, okay? We are publicly, we are making a public declaration that I am dying to self and I'm being raised together with Christ into a new person. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, baptism, I like to give this analogy. It's a bit like when you meet a new person in life or you fall in love with someone. When you fall in love with someone, say a boy or a girl meets a boy, do they go around telling everyone that, oh, I met, a, oh, I met um, my, my sweetheart, I met a boyfriend, or I met my, oh, this is the one. There are some people who do that, but most of the time people don't. They kind of just tend to keep it to themselves for a while. They are cautious, they want to see how it is going to go. But there comes a time when they will say, invite everybody and say, hey, come, we are getting engaged, we are getting married, I met somebody, and I'm now going to marry this person. Now they are making a public declaration. Now they want everybody to know. So when you are being baptized, you are actually making a public declaration in front of the world, and in the spirit realm, it has a very powerful significance. You are actually declaring that I am with him, I am with Christ. Amen. Amen. When you were born again, you probably didn't feel too excited about it. You were just thinking, we'll see how it goes. You were just going to church. You were mingling with other Christians. But when you then got baptized, you began to send that message that, okay, this is what I am. I am now with Jesus. Amen. Is it, is, it, is it going okay? Yes. Or am I still talking to myself? No. no. Thank you, thank you. Better than last time, huh? Okay, let's uh, go to the next slide. Thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Who is that? <laughs> Who is that, Elhana? Okay. Oh. okay. Who is that? So, today, who is that? It's David and Goliath. Okay, so what was uh, Goliath's 
non-verbal language there. What was he communicating to the young man? <laughs> I'm gonna spash you, right? But there is also another thing that Goliath was doing uh, before this event. There is a non-verbal uh, communication, something that this Philistine was communicating to uh, the uh, people of Israel at that time. Before he, he came here, there is something else. Can you just read, uh, please, that scripture? 1 Samuel 17, verse 1. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 1 Samuel 17, <coughs> verse 1. Non-verbal communication. So important. 1 Samuel 17, verse... You're telling me that no one, no one can find 1 Samuel 17, verse 1? I call it shock. <laughs> this was not the first time that the, the, the Goliath uh, had done it with, the, with the, uh, his Philistine army. And they used to do that. Uh, when you look back and you read, you find that there came a time uh, coming up to his uh, confrontation with David. He, he was now making it a day, almost a daily occurrence that he would go and stand on the hills of Shoko and he would challenge uh, the, uh, the, the armies of Israel and he would uh, um, hell verbal abuse at them, you know. And what was he trying to say? He was trying to intimidate. He was trying to show them that, you know what, uh, we, we got this, we are, we are going to uh, we are going to defeat you. We are going to get what we want. We are going to take your land. We are going to take uh, your people. And you know what? Throughout history, uh, the history of Israel, it has always happened that they would come into Israel, they would um, grab um, animals, they would take women, they would take children, and they would go across to them. And so Israel was always intimidated by its neighbors. So it doesn't surprise us that uh, what we see happening in the world today. Um, but our hearts and uh, our prayers go to the, all the families that are being affected by the war in Israel. So we need to keep praying for all the countries that are involved and for the, and for the innocent families uh, who have been caught up in all the politics of this war. Okay, let's go to the second, to the next slide. Okay, we see a non-verbal communication. Uh, now, the non-verbal communication I want to talk about here, refer to, it's not actually that stoning, that what's happening there, although it is, but um, we are going to see the non-verbal communication. This is the part that really shows you that God cares about what you communicate with your eyes, what you communicate with your mouth, what you communicate with your body, how you express yourself before God and before men too. It's really, do you know that people uh, sometimes uh, they offend other people, sometimes unintentional, and I think maybe that's why the Holy Spirit wanted me to teach about it. Because, you know, you find people, uh, was it Bridget who was teaching, someone who was teaching the other week, and they were saying that, um, um, they were saying that, you know, sometimes people end up uh, not even coming to church sometimes, because they just feel like they are not getting a good vibe from somebody. And they just feel that maybe somebody doesn't like them, you know. 
But when people talk, it dispels that non verbal. Amen. I was talking to Deacon Manjengo and I was saying, we need time to get together, you know, and, uh, and talk and maybe eat something. Because sometimes when you are, yeah, when you are not uh, communicating, there is that gap that creates. And when you have a gap, that creates, especially if you are people who fellowship together, you know, people who uh, work together, and you leave that gap, the enemy takes advantage and gets in that gap. Elder doesn't talk to me these days anymore. Now the guy doesn't talk to me anymore. <laughs> but there's nothing. <laughs> it's just that we are not communicating. Okay? So that non verbal, that silent, do you know that actually saying nothing, you are actually saying something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when, you, when you don't say anything, you know, <laughs> sometimes, uh, you know, we are a couple like any other. You know, and sometimes we have our own little squabbles, and then, you know, then I just shut off. You know, I think men do that. I think we do that. We just come to a point where we just say, okay, I'm not having this conversation anymore. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so it's a, it's a non verbal. It's a, but it's, it can be a little bit dangerous, too, when, when you have uh, non verbal. So now let's hear what God. Say, now, what happened with these two brothers that resulted in this was that one of them, Abel, he had given a sacrifice that had been accepted by God. Okay, I'm not going to go into the details of the sacrifice, but what we are trying to say is that uh, Abel, which is the one being stoned here, he gave a, a sacrifice that was acceptable to God. Okay, and Cain was not happy. Let's hear what God said to him. Can you all go Genesis chapter 4, verse 5 to 7? And hear what God said to him. Not, con not concerning anything else, but the way his non-verbal communication was coming across to God. And remember, in the early days, men had such a relationship with God uh, that uh, it was almost a one on one, like I'm communicating with you. Let someone can someone read Genesis chapter 4, verse 5 to 7. But Lord came and his offering uh -huh. did not go to his favor. Mm. So Cain was very angry. Uh -huh. His face was downcast. His face was downcast. So Cain was not happy. He was not happy that someone's, his brother's sacrifice had been accepted. And I think this is the first time we hear, I don't know, we hear about uh, uh, someone making a sacrifice to God. I think, I don't know another time before then. I don't hear that Adam had ever made any sacrifice to God. I didn't read that. But he and his two sons, it must be something that he probably taught them into, probably you know, uh, had um, uh, explained to them that it was important to do good. I don't think they just guessed it. That maybe they did, maybe by inspiration or revelation otherwise. But, you know, so now Cain is not happy about the uh, sacrifice and God has noticed that he is angry. Okay? So what does God go on to say about his non-verbal expressions? Uh -huh. Why are you angry? Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do yeah. not, if you do not do what is right, then you is crouching at your door. Yeah. The Shona Bible will say, Ko chiso chako chau nyana nei. I like Shona. <laughs> yeah? Why is your face so downcast? So God was really not pleased. Uh, if you look at this, look at how Satan, okay, a non verbal for to God for like, no, no. And you know what? Iniquity. Iniquity is different from sin because sin 
you have actually done it, you have crossed that path. But iniquity means that there is your, 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 your thinking, your attitude, uh, it, is, it, is kind of, it has been altered. Okay? It means that where you were and where you are heading, or where you are going, or where you are now, you have been altered. There has been a change. There has been a move in the wrong direction. So, uh, do you think that verbal communication is important to God? Yes. So, you really need to be mindful what you are communicating. Amen. You really need to be mindful because uh, sometimes people can actually come in church and just feel like, you know what, I don't think I'm going back to that. That's why ushers, it's important for us to have ushers who smile. Thank you, Mama, for smiling. <laughs> you, need to, you need to smile when she's staying or smiling. So you need to be a smiler, you know, uh, because it communicates something. Have you seen me doing ushering? I'm, I, now I'm, I'm blowing my own trumpet, right? <laughs> Sometimes you have to blow your own trumpet because otherwise no one is going to blow it for you, right? When I'm doing ushering, you probably notice. As you are coming to the door, I'm already, I'm already watching you. And I can't wait for you to come and I can shake your hand and smile at you, right? Amen. We used to have an elder when we grew up. He was not a preacher or a great preacher or teacher. But there was something intoxicating about his personality in his demeanor. Wow. He was just such a smiler, that man. You know, he could, he could just stand in front of the church and go <laughs> and, and everyone starts to laugh and everyone begins to smile. He was just, just he had this non-verbal communication that was just so powerful. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now we are going to go to a non-verbal um, communication that can be quite quite dangerous. Um, let's move to the next slide. Uh -huh. Paul and Apollos. There was a time when the church became divided. And the reason why the church became divided was because there was non-verbal thing going on in the church. It started by also taught a message the other week about comparison. But who was here? Also taught a message about comparison. Yes. And she was saying it is the biggest weakness that we have as Christians. Yes. And you know what? This is the problem that happened in the church. Right? Yes. The problem that happened in the church was uh, that people started comparing. People started, they, they had these two men of God, Paul and Apollos. They were gifted in their own different ways, right? And God was using them in their own different ways. But what happened is that we had two factions in the church. We now came to a point where there was a faction that was saying, Paul is the man, Paul is the guy. Paul really does it for me. And then there were other people who were supporting Apollos. You know, it started with non-verbal communication. And as time was going on, it became apparent. And you know what? Paul, being a man of God, if I was him, okay, I'm coming to the end. If I was, if Paul had been me, right, I would have just said, okay. It's me they want, and I would just have taken all the, right? I would take a chair and sit in the sun and say, oh, yes, come on, bring it on, right? Okay, now they are going to know who is who in here. But you know what? Paul did not like it. Not one bit. And the Bible says that he decided to uh, stand before the church and rebuke the church. Amen. Okay, so we are going to read. We are going to read. It's a little bit of a long scripture. But Paul realized that both of them were men of God. That's one thing they realized. That no, I think this church, 
we need correction here. There is something that is not going right. Because at the end of the day, we are both men of God. At the end of the day, we are both gifted differently. Okay? And now, it looks like the church has, is becoming divided between those who support Paul and those who supported Apollos. Those who thought Apollos was the man and those who thought, no, Paul is the real deal. Okay? And do you know what? The church became the walking dead. If anyone saw the movie, The Walking Dead. Okay? So, people were coming infected with their attitude, with wrong attitude, with bad attitude, right? And now they came into the church and started infecting others, right? In the walking dead, you see people that come in affected, and when they bite another person, they themselves become affected. And this is what was happening to the church. And Paul, and Paul felt like, you know what? It's time to uh, correct this. It's time to uh, stop this comparison. And Paul had to rebuke. Okay? And he did not intentionally uh, steal the limelight, but he felt like, you know what? We need to... Let's read what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4. Let's read what he said to the church. When one of you says, I am a follower of Paul. Yes, when one of you says, I am a follower of Paul. And another says, I follow Apollos. And another one says, oh, Apollos is the, he is the one, he is the, he is, he is the man for me. What does he go on to say? Aren't you acting just like the people of the world? Are you not acting just like carnal Christians, just like the people of the world? Are you not showing that you are not mature in Christianity? That God is a God of variety. You know, there are some people who are just so boring, right? <laughs> because they don't, they don't come to change expecting something different. They come to change expecting the same, the same more, the same more. That's why even Pastor herself, uh, she feels like, you know, sometimes it's time for her to give other people a chance. Not just for them to grow. Um, um, but also a chance for them to have to experience God in a different way or in a different light. Hallelujah. Okay. So uh, let me. I just wanted to say uh, in my closing. I just wanted to talk about um, the effects of this kind of non-verbal communication. The non-verbal communication uh, that divides the church it, it, it can be very polarizing okay, and it can be dangerous and do you know how it starts? it starts with permission people permit attitudes people permit wrong attitudes to come into their lives and they end up disliking other people and which is why Paul felt like no you know, this is not right. I need to correct the church. Hallelujah. Um, and you know when the non-verbal becomes uh, negative? Pastor was saying to me the other day, she said, you know, it blocks your prayers. <laughs> I <coughs> Susan, Pastor would correct me. I had said something. <coughs> and she said, no, my husband. Don't do that because it's, it's going to block your prayers. She said, just let it go. Just let it go. Because if you, you know, if you go on about something that someone did and that person doesn't even know, you know, you end up angry with that person, you know, then you end up not able to forgive that person. So today, I think we will do some prayer. Very quickly, let me just come to the end. It creates victims, like we are saying. When we have none verbal, that is negative. It creates victims because someone goes to someone and says, oh, you know, I don't really get a good vibe from that person. And then that person goes and says, yeah, you know, so and so also told me about her that they don't feel very good about her. 
or I don't like this person. There are some people who just don't like uh, people, you know, and they're like, oh, I don't like, I don't like him, you know. Um, so, uh, also it creates a negative repro re reciprocity, okay? When you, when you communicate a wrong non-verbal, the, the person, when the first other person sends that you don't like them, they begin to uh, kind of stay away from you or avoid you because they just feel like you communicated something to them that says that you don't like them. So they, they feel like the safest way is for them to stay out of your circle or out of your realm. And that can create a very wrong precedent, especially in the church. Also, what happens is when you have this negative, non-verbal, it also reaches new members. It reaches new church members. They begin to sense that in this church um, there is something that is not right. And you find the church will stop growing. And then you find that, why are we not growing? Why? But we are doing the right thing. We are witnessing. We are, we are going out. We are inviting people. But why is the church not growing? Because there is negative, non-verbal that are happening in the quiet, in the silence. And it's all, it all gets very spiritual. And the enemy likes those kind of um, um, stalemates, if you like, spiritual stalemates. The devil really likes that. And, and, and he gets in. And then before you know it, people are just leaving and not staying. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It prevents church growth. So, you know, so um, I feel that at this point, uh, maybe it would be uh, a, a beneficial thing if we all examine ourselves and say, um, how have I been communicating with my non verbal how have I been communicating my non-verbal at work? How have I been communicating my non-verbal in church? Why is it that, and there are some people who have created an enmity where there was no enmity, where it was not called for because of this non-verbal communication. So I would like us to just uh, have a moment of reflection about our non-verbal communication. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, shall we stand up on our feet, please? Let's just have a moment of reflection. Let's just have a moment of talking to God and say, God, help me. If I have communicated something that I was not supposed to communicate, help me, Lord. Why is it that uh, um, I have lost touch with some people? It, they may be long distance people. Maybe you had a conversation on the phone and they kind of got the wrong end of what you were saying. Maybe you sent a text. You know, I have done it. I've sent a text uh, to, uh, to uh, Baba, and meaning, meaning to send it to my or to my meaning to send it to Baba. <laughs> and then I have to say, oh, sorry, I sent the wrong message. So, and that can create um, a statement. And some people may not realize that you made a mistake. Some people may actually think that you did something deliberately because you were trying to communicate something to them. And yet it wasn't the case. So let's just go before the Lord this morning. Let's just speak to God in our own ways, in your own, uh, in how the Holy Spirit has spoken to you or in how you have understood this teaching. If you have understood the importance of non-verbal communication in your life, maybe somebody misunderstood you and you have tried to reconcile with that person and that person just won't reconcile with you. You have tried to, uh, uh, do whatever you can do. You have tried even 
sending someone to talk to them, but that person just won't open up to you because they got the wrong end. They thought you were communicating something that you were actually not communicating. So let us just go before God and just pray and say, God, help me this morning, this afternoon. Help me, Lord, so that in my communication, whether it's verbal or non-verbal, that I will communicate correctly, that I will communicate in a way that brings favor, so that I can help favor with both men and with God. Let us pray. Oh, hallelujah, Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you this morning. We want to thank you for your word. We want to thank you for speaking to us, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to thank you because you know us, Lord, more than we know ourselves. You are the one who created us, and you created us in our own image. And you understand, oh Lord, how we feel. You understand uh, how we express ourselves. You understand, oh God, uh, when we have good intentions. And you understand when we have wrong intentions. And Lord, I am praying, oh God, that as you have taught us today, oh God, to be mindful, oh God, of our expression, to be mindful of how we communicate to be mindful of our non-verbal communication. I am praying, oh God, that we will become, Lord, we will not become a tool of the devil, that we will not become a tool of the enemy, but that we will become a tool in the arm of God. We will become a weapon in the hand of God. Father, I want to pray and to thank you, oh God, uh, for your people. I want to thank you for... Uh, giving them the uh, uh, attention span. And I want to thank you, Lord, knowing, oh God, that you always have something. Lord, that your word, oh God, will not go and come back without fulfilling what you have uh, determined it to be, oh God. I pray and I thank you this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. I think this is a very important teaching. Some people may take it lightly like it's nothing. How many people do you hate? They haven't said anything. Let's be honest, church. You know, I stand here and the way you're looking at me, I'm also even right, let's talk. I just look at you, you're sitting there. I'm like, how many people doesn't like me to be here? Am I right? This is not verbal communication is so true. We have to repent. There are people we assume we don't talk to certain people. Not because they've done anything to us, but because the way they just kind of come across to you. Am I right, Moses? You just feel like I think they don't like me. Or maybe they are saying a statement. Am I right? May God help us. Because there are some people we have missed our blessing. Because we misread what is going on in the person. Some people are going through their own problems. They are going through a difficulty. They are going through something hard. They need your prayer. Maybe they are not even seeing you. And you have been in a situation where you are looking at someone and you can't even see them. Am I speaking? You, this is a very powerful teaching that takes you to meditate. You know, Take time, look at your life. How many people that I don't speak to? Because I just assume it looks like they don't like me. Ah, even at work. Even at, in a family, huh? there are people who just come across like there's a problem with you. And you just pull away. You make it even worse. Because you don't break the devil's lies. If we only can break every lie of the enemy, and say, devil, you are a liar. Yes. And say, devil, you are a liar. Yes. I am sent to love. Yes. I am sent to show peace. Yes. I am sent to bring harmony. Yes. I am in this family to bring love. Yes. We are in this family yes. to be the light. Hallelujah. Yes. To be the light. Yes. To be the light. Yes. At your workplace, that person 
that mother, that man, that boss, you are the light. Don't give the devil a foothold. Stop giving a what? Uh-huh. So if you go home, go and look through your phone. Those people you don't take anymore. Those people whom you have stopped talking to. Those people you don't communicate with anymore. When you see them in church, you change direction. Ah, this is true. This was a powerful word. May God help us. May God help us. May God help us. I don't know about you, but I felt guilty. Because sometimes I'm preaching and I look at certain people, it's like they're looking at their watches. Like that black pastor, we need to go now. I am with, I, I'm guilty too. I don't know about you, you may be innocent, but I feel that I'm guilty too. There are some people I look at and I feel like they just don't like me. I haven't done anything to them, but I just don't feel like they love me enough. So if I am to make this right, what am I supposed to do? Love them big first. Show them love first. Show them love until they accept my love. Amen. 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 We are not innocent. God has spoken to us. Our non-verbal communication but eternal love. Amen. For us to keep people, when you see a new person, don't ignore them. Love them. Talk to them. Smile at them. Let them know we are your loving church. Amen. 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 Before I call our secretary to take an offering, I'm going to ask Pastor B to pray. You see, spirit of love is key in the church. Spirit of love is what? You see, you talk to other people, they're like in a hurry. Do you know what I'm talking about? I'm trying to talk to Lord, to, to, to Tari, but when I look at her, it's like she has no time for me. She's in a hurry, she needs to go. Have you ever seen anything like that? Oh, you are sitting and having a conversation. Someone is actually playing on their phone like they are not. I always say that to you, but how many times you but I'm talking this way. You must run, get off the phone. Because I feel like his language is saying that's what you are saying, I don't care. I mean, do you understand, church? It's like he's saying what you are saying is nonsense. And you know, because I got something big, big better to do here. So I don't know which innocent on this one. I don't know which kilos on this one. You look at that boy and like, you're not smiling at me. What have I done to him? When I go home, I'm already browsing my mind. What did I do to Tabiwa? He looked so serious today. I tried to greet him. He's like, how oh, high pastor you walk away? What did I do? How many people think like that guy? We are all guilty one way or the other. We need the grace of This is a very important word of God. If we don't change, because God does not look at what you say, ah, He looks at your heart. So I want to pass that we just pray that the spirit of love will fill the church, will fill all of us. As we start, we are going into a week of prayer. We are starting our chapter 12 days. I'll talk about it after Pastor pray. We got to have a right attitude of prayer. Amen? I know the time has gone. I'm not going to be long with you. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It's been a while. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I was wondering now uh, what message the Lord has for us. Amen. Well, thank God for that message. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Usually when you are you've not prayed enough and you're in the flesh, you, you, you begin to communicate in the flesh. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But when you step in the spirit, you will begin to see as God and think like God and reason like God. Yes. Amen? Amen? I would love to come back to your Friday services. Amen. Your Friday night prayers. So we can start praying again. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we ready? Yes. Are we ready? Yes. Psalms uh, 24. The book of Psalms 24.
to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, right and true, with us given, I'll be a
Cleanse me, Lord. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Oh, Rabba Baka, Sham Randele Brahmazalabaraji. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, any form of iniquity, any form of sin, oh God, any form of arrogance, any form of envy, any form of jealousy, oh God, any impurity in my heart, Lord, cleanse me, Lord, cleanse me, Lord. Oh, Rabba Baka, Sham Randele Brahmazalabaraji. Everybody say this with me. Say in the name of Jesus. Oh, I can't hear your voice. Say in the name of Jesus. All right, come closer. Come closer. From the back. Come closer. We are so cold this morning. Come closer. I don't know if it's the sanctuary or it's us. Come closer. I want to hear your voice like thunder this morning. Amen. Come closer, you're scared. Come closer. Hey! It's not starting snowing yet. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Please, after this, I'm serious. The Bible says, Amen. Blessed are those who are pure in heart. Somebody say pure in heart. For they shall see God. Next time, take Psalm 51. After this, you, you go home. And you want God to start revealing things you bring. Okay? When you recite this Psalm 51, repeat it to yourself. The whole of 51. And you really try to go to cleanse you, your dream life will open up again. That's the word for somebody. Amen. Are we ready now? Say this out and bless. Say, My Father, my father I, come I come before you. I repent, I repent for every sin I, I have done, any evil word that I have spoken, any act of the flesh I have displayed to my brother, to my sister. Lord, show me great mercy on behalf of me and my family. Have mercy upon me. I come as Job. As Job repented for his family. I repent for my family. Show mercy upon me. Show mercy upon my family. Show mercy upon this church. In the name of Jesus, I decree. Let my prayers be acceptable before you now. In the name of Jesus, as I go into prayer, cleanse my heart, cleanse my soul, cleanse my spirit. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let your blood wash me. Let your, wash, your blood purge me. Let your blood consecrate me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, say this now, like, say, my Father, let the heavens be open over me now. Pour your mercy upon me. In the name of Jesus, as I stand, I receive the armor of the Lord, the full armor of God. In the name of Jesus, let the helmet that protects my mind come upon me now. I bind the spirit of fear. I rebuke every attack. In the name of Jesus, I command my doors of favor, my doors of breakthrough for this week to be opened now. In the name of Jesus, anything that has dried up my spiritual life, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke it now. My father, my father, Set me on fire. Set my heart on fire. Restore my love. Restore my fellowship with you. In the name of Jesus. Now say this now that I say in the name of Jesus. Let the gateway of heaven. Let the door of revelation be opened over my life. Be opened over my dream life. Right now. Open your mouth and begin to pray. The door, the door, the door of revelation. The gateway of heaven, let it be opened over me and my family right now. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say it right now. I receive the spirit of grace, the spirit of prayer. In the name of Jesus, let the river of love begin to flow in my life, in my heart. In the name of Jesus, I receive and activate. The Spirit of Jesus is alive in me. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of failure. I rebuke the spirit of stagnancy. I rebuke the spirit of poverty. In the name of Jesus, as I enter this week, I receive eternal life. I receive eternal life. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. John, like a river. Joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul. Joy like a river, joy.
in the name of Jesus Christ. Spirit of God, listen on common grace. Take us to another level, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We will rebuke every form of discouragement in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Go and find one, two, three people. Hug them and say, I love you, I love you, I love you. Hug them and say, I love you.